Now, Tam Tam is here with us today. And he's our next speaker. That's the celebrity, hands the story. So let's see. He's going to speak about transforming speaking digitally. International retail leader with over 20 years MNC experience, leading teams in Malaysia, Singapore, and the Middle East. Social entrepreneur, professional speaker, and global award winner for retail sales, marketing, and L&D. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Cham Cham, grown up to Lingesh. Thank you, thank you. So as I'm walking up here, right, um, this scene from this Tamil movie comes to my mind from my favorite comedian called Buddy Bailu. And he says in that movie, It means, I'm a criminal, I'm a criminal, I'm going to jail as well. So in that movie, he wants to be a wannabe criminal, he wants to be that drug lord, right? And the easiest way he gets to do it is to go to jail. And when the police come to catch the drug lords, he jumps onto the police bus and says, take me to jail, take me to jail, because everybody wants to see. That's how I feel today. Yeah. <laughs> I was here yesterday and today to see the series of speakers over here. I only started professional speaking um, full time since August last year. So I've been um, working, uh, I've been employed for the past 20 years. I uh, had a great career, um, came uh, March uh, 14, 2020, I was in Muscat, um, in Oman, I was the head of marketing for Oman, managing the non-fuels business, bringing in brands into Oman and so on, great, great, happy, expatriate salary, life was great, got news that my uh, auntie passed away, uh, booked the last flight out of Muscat, landed in Kuala Lumpur on 15th of March, Sunday morning. Opened up my phone and I saw that uh, Oman declared lockdown. The army came in, the army took over the country, uh, everybody had to stay home. That time Malaysia was not into lockdown yet. And I didn't know what was lockdown. I didn't realize the impact that lockdown would have on me. Two, three days later, Malaysia went on lockdown. From that day, it has been 27 months. I lost my job, I lost my career, my house, my car, everything. My visa got cancelled. Oman passed a law saying that any expatriate worker who has been out of the country physically for more than 150 days, immediately they cancelled the visa. They got a local to replace me. And that's it. So I was uh, <laughs> clueless, right? Clueless. Very difficult, very difficult. And this is where MAPS came into the picture. Yeah? MAPS came into the picture. I had the opportunity to speak to uh, Bawani very, very early when I came back, I, know, I was like, it was very difficult. You just imagine 20 years of your career built just on this. And, and my uh, future was already pre planned by uh, Shell. I worked for Shell Malaysia, Shell Singapore, Shell Oman. And suddenly you just lose it. Yeah? You just lose it, not because of COVID, but because the country made a policy. But for me and my employer, we had no issues. Everybody worked from home, globally. But yet, because of unforeseen circumstances that you could no longer, you could not imagine Right? It's just gone. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today to share with you how digitally I was able to transition and how I used the digital capabilities and how maps played a huge role in where I am today. Zoom, very popular nowadays, right? So Zoom is continuing, Zoom is going to be here. So the Zoom's boss, Eric Yuan, says that, you know, Zoom is going to be here, it's going to go big, fantastic, everybody gets on Zoom. Now we have got so many different models and platforms. It gets just confusing. Each client, one client says, I want to use WebEx. The other client says, no, I want to use MS Teams. The other one says, no, I want Zoom. The other one says, no, I got my in-house. How do you then manage all these tools, right? How do you manage? It's so difficult to transition. Monday and Friday, I'm on WebEx. Come Thursday, the customer says, no, I want Zoom. And then they are, on Monday again, he says, no, I've got my own internal one. You need to come in two days earlier to learn how to use my internal tool. Damn, I'm a salesman. I'm not a tech guy. Huh? So this is going to be very, very difficult. Then, and then uh, a few weeks ago, Elon Musk comes and says, hey, no, everybody come back to office. Huge change, all right? When Elon Musk speaks, the world changes. All right? When Elon Musk comes and says, everybody get back to office, it is going to impact the industry worldwide. A lot of companies are now thinking about it, and now almost everybody is back at work. Maybank is back at work, Delta National is back at work, Shell is back at work. 
So does this mean this is the end of the digital era? No. Training will continue to be relevant. Training will continue to be growing. However, the training budgets allocated will continue to decline. I was the L&D manager for Shell Malaysia and Singapore from 2015 to 2019. Uh, annually, we train about 15 to 20,000 learners. My budget was close to uh, US dollar five million. All right, I had an academy in Singapore, I had an academy in Malaysia. Today, that budget is less than 20%. The training has increased. The volume has increased, and yet the budget, the amount spent has reduced tremendously. And what does that mean to us? It's a huge impact to us. And if we do not learn to move to the digital world, it is going to be a killer. Because you know why? Organizations have learned today that I can deliver the same value of training. Quality is subjective. But in terms of quantity, we can deliver more by going virtual. And for an L&D manager like me, numbers is my KPI. Have you delivered 100 trainings this year? Yes, done. 15,000 learners? Yes, done. Tap, tap, tap. I get my incentive, I get my increment, I get my bonus. However, when it comes to quality, then it's something much more questionable. All right? So remember this, yeah? Training volume is going to increase. There's no doubt about it. But the budget is going to be reduced, it's going to decline. And how are you making sure that you are ahead of the pack? Now, let me tell you, there are three things that happened in my life. This is my father. Uh, I was born into a family where my father and my mother are both blind. Uh, my mother has been blind since birth. My father lost his uh, eyesight in an accident at the age of 20. So you can imagine, yeah? Uh, and by the way, I'm a school dropout. I failed my SPM as well. So, going up in this place called Sun Ping Flats. How many of you know where it's Sun Ping Flats? Yes. Yeah, the, the upmarket, you know, we had villas, condos, you know. Uh, my, my, my neighbors were all going to international school and so on. One interesting statistic is, until today, I'm the only one in that flat, yeah. This flat is just beside Puru Jail. Until today, until today, yeah, because I'm still close in contact. Until today, I'm the only boy who went into university from that flat. Until today. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a success story, it's something that is very sad, you know, it's very sad, it's not a success. <laughs> but I failed my SPM, I had to redo everything again. So this is a situation, this actual picture, when I taught my father how to learn using an iPhone. Why he had to learn was because I was moving to Oman, and then my father and mother were both going to be alone. They had to go to do the hospital appointments and so on. Right? And the only way they could do that, and this is a sad thing, yeah? When, when Grab first started, they had, uh, you could call to book a cab, right? You could call to book a cab. Over the few months, they stopped that service. So the blind people in Malaysia were no longer able to call a Grab because they cannot telephone anymore. It had to be through the app. And that was a total loss of mobility for my parents. So I had to book it for them. Unfortunately or fortunately, I got an opportunity to go abroad and we had to learn. And, th and the challenging thing with this technology is a sighted person like me is not able to train my father because they use a tapping system. The screen is black, it's blank. They tap on the screen and the other boy is also a blind person. So it's a younger boy, a blind boy, who is teaching my father how to use the iPhone. All right. Can you imagine using your smartphone when there's nothing on the screen? So this is how they learn. And it got me thinking, at the age of 480, blind, he can still learn to use technology. So by the way, they use the technology now. They can book their own grab using the smartphones, yeah? Now the second one. So this is my assistant. Her name is Leela. Um, she lost her leg. She's an amputee. Um, she's also blind. On one eye totally gone. The other one, she has got 40% eyesight. Leela was doing very well. Suddenly she was hit by diabetes. Diabetes hit her so hard that within three months, she had to remove her leg. She lost the eyesight. And now she just has 40% visibility. From someone who was a secretary in an MNC, suddenly to lose everything. 
So what we did with Lila, I employed, deployed the similar strategy. Can you learn using this mobile phone? So Lila just did that. So through her mobile phone, she actually took the HRDF TTT using her mobile phone and she got herself certified. So today Lila, with only 40% eyesight on a wheelchair, is a HRDF trainer. So we conduct trainings together, we run a lot of motivational programs, and we believe that this can be replicated in others. Right? It is only made possible due to the digital capabilities and the ability of the human mind to learn. Now the third one, let me tell you the story. So you know when, when uh, this, this whole COVID thing came, a lot of our children went to online learning, right? So I have a seven-year-old boy called Lakshan. So Lakshan's school said, okay, let's go online learning, right? So we set up a desk and a chair for him, everything was done. This was three months into uh, online learning. And I was in my room working for Shell, you know, everything was fine, I didn't lose my job yet, okay, good. And suddenly I hear one day, the teacher calling, Lakshan, can you read this sentence? I'm okay, he's in the next room. Again, Lakshan, please read this sentence. And why isn't Lakshan responding? So I go over, and Lakshan is not there. <laughs> Alright, Lakshan is not there. And the teacher, at and so, and that point of time, the teacher is telling, Lakshan, can you read the sentence? Lakshan, what are you doing? And I'm like, Lakshan is not there. Why is the teacher calling Lakshan? And suddenly, Lakshan comes running. I'm like, okay. I look at his screen, and this is what I found. <laughs> Seven-year-old boy, huh? Seven-year-old. <laughs> A lot of you still don't get this, right? I didn't get it at all because how can Lakshan be on screen attending the class and Lakshan is now running from the bedroom here? It is amazing how we learn, yeah? And from an 80-year-old man who is blind, totally blind, to a 7-year-old child, they have demonstrated the ability to learn, to adapt, and to move forward. This, can, this is scary, right? You know? And it really took me a while because I couldn't understand what is happening. He, only later I told him, show me what you did, then he opens up this background, then I understand, damn. He took a picture, he put as a background, and when the class is going on, he puts the background, he goes playing. <laughs> oh, <that's it. laughs> Don't try this for Yes, 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 yes. Okay, all right. See, digital tools can be overwhelming as well. Right? Despite working for an MNC, uh, I manage teams in Russia, in Ecuador, in uh, Manila, and in Bangalore. All right? But we just use it for the basic function of communication only. I do not use it to train. All right? When I came into the professional speaking field conducting trainings, the clients say, hey, English, we want to have games, we want to have fun. I'm like, what fun you want? I'm here to learn, you learn, you go back, you do your job better, that's it. All right? I don't have time for fun. But that's what the client wants, and how do you have fun? On digital, what do, you want me, what do you want me to do? You want me to dance? And then I realized there were so many other trainers who were not as experienced as me, who did not have the corporate knowledge, but were doing better because you know why? They had learned to use the technology in their favor. And if I decided to hold on and say, no, I am only going to focus on the delivery, on the content, and make sure that you become better at your job, I would have lost. <laughs> Technology kills the drama. The same drama that the model of delivery I'm giving you today would have failed, all right, if I was to do it virtually. But yesterday, we saw the sniper guy, right, who showed you how easy it is. I was so amazed how it can be done. But but for me, you know, I struggled you know, from Zoom. I, you know, I need to go breakout room. I'm like all over the place, and I'm like, my God, this is killing me. But that guy did it so seamlessly. That means it can be done. Technology and digital capabilities can give us that drama. I'm going to rush through, I'm going to skip this slide, but you all know that tech is here to stay. All right? We need to leverage on the tools. Now, this is where I want you to focus. This is my biggest takeaway for you. See, if we focus on the technology and we focus on the digital solutions, we will lose out. Because a lot of us here are not technical experts, but we are business experts. You could be a speaker in terms of communication, you could be an image, you could be on branding, you could be on communication, anything. Remember that the tech needs to complement the speaker. 
It is not the other way around. You need to know what is the right tech that you need to use. But it is always you and the content that is in control. If you change yourself according to the tech, you will keep changing. You will never be an expert in anything. Remember, the guy, the sniper, his phone was seven years old. He didn't keep changing his phone, right? It was just he found the right tech that was sufficient to deliver what he wanted. So focus on that. And remember, do not allow yourself to keep jumping, adapting to new technology. It is you who is the master of your trade. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that digital adoption will accelerate the global expansion of Malaysian speakers. I've been in this journey for less than a year, but I've already been to a few countries already. And what gave me that window of opportunity was the digital arena. Before I leave, I just want to say one more thing, right? I just want to say thank you to MAPS. And I want to read an, a message that I got. And this message is because of you. Remember we had this spotlight event a few, I think about two months back? I spoke at that event, confident, you know, I know everything. And suddenly, the amount of messages I got from so many of you, Lingesh, you need to do this. Lingesh, you need to do that. Lingesh, 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 Lingesh. like, what is this? You know, suddenly, I thought I was a great speaker. How come now suddenly they're giving me so many things? But I listened. Two weeks ago, I was in this event in Eko Satya, Eko Satya KL. I told the same story, but this time, it was the way the MAPS members told me how to tell the story. I'm going to read you a message that I got, yeah? Lingesh, thank you for your sharing. I went back home and shared this story with my husband. I told it to my children and we cried. I hope my children will become like you. Wow. The story may be mine, but the storytelling is yours. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful round of applause for Lingesh.